that, Mr. Spencer? Well, they made a few holes in the coach body, but none in mine. I'm sorry I couldn't help you, but, you know, I'm useless. Well, what? Let them get away. I don't like to shoot a man in the back. I don't think they'd have such scruples. They're the most blundering, timid stage robbers I ever heard of. We could have killed all three of them. Like shooting blind water chickens on the ground with their wings broke. I'll admit they blundered in following the coach into this clearing. And you must admit they're timid, too. No. They turned and ran because they recognized you. And don't forget, you shot two guns out of their hands. Any idea who they might be? That's a cinch. They're not professionals. Remember, there are three miners down on their lock. I wish I could believe that. I think they're after just one thing. The pardon is in my pocket for Al Daly. I'm afraid we'll hear from them again, kid. I still couldn't shoot a man running away. Who would want to steal a pardon that would save an innocent man from being hanged? In the case of Daly, plenty of people. Why do you think the governor asked Kit to go to Auburn with me? Well, should we get to go, Mr. Spence? Are we staying overnight in San Carlos? Well, if you can stand another night on the road, I'd like to go straight through. That is, if we can get a fresh team and a new driver. I can stand it. Daly will hang at midnight tomorrow if I don't get there. I don't want to run too close. Horses. The San Bernardino stage took the last team a couple of hours ago. Can we go on with our horses, kid? Yeah, we've been pressing them over mountain roads all day. They'd never get through. How far is it from here to Auburn? Twelve hours ought to get us there in plenty of time. If we get a five o'clock start, that'll give you seven hour leeway. All right. A good sleep in a bed won't hurt any of us. The way we push through day and night. Sorrow had the driver put up the horses and please bring the bags to the hotel. What are you gonna do with the pardon, Mr. Spence? We'll leave it in my room under my pillow, I guess. You meant what you said. I guess I won't get any sleep tonight. I'll be sitting up in your room all night. Well, I certainly wouldn't leave it with the hotel management. Let's ask the express company to put in their safe. Fine. Minari. Kid Carson, have you met Mr. Minari? It's an honor to meet you, sir. Thank you. What brings you to St. Carlos? We're just staying overnight. I'm on my way to Auburn with a pardon for one of my clients. Where are you staying? Here at the hotel. We've been on the road several days. We're going to have supper and turn in early. Then sit down a minute. I'm going to try and change your plans. I'm staying at my San Carlos ranch for a while. Well, Mr. Minari has wide interest in California. Ranching, mining. And what else, Jay? I'm just a dabbler. A little bit of everything. I was going to suggest that you have supper and spend the night at my ranch. Well, I'm in Kit's hands. He's guaranteed the governor to deliver me in Auburn before midnight tomorrow. Then you have plenty of time. Oh, I'm afraid we haven't. The life of a man named Daly depends on our getting there. We're getting an early start. How early? Six in the morning. I promise to have you here at the hotel before then. What do you think, Kit? Oh, I'm afraid we'll have to decline. I'm going to keep him under my thumb until I get him safely in Auburn. <laughs> Uh, at least let me play host to you here. You can at least have supper with me. Uh, excuse me. Kit. Excuse me. The horses are watered and fitted, and the bags are in our rooms. Good. Did you look around the stables? See, and they told me the truth. There are no fresh horses. Do you suspect that someone is trying to prevent the pardon from arriving on time? I don't know. I didn't think much about that stagecoach holdup this morning. 
But I'll be in held over here at the hotel. Isn't he kind of wondering? Then I shall sleep in the stable tonight and see that nothing happens to the horses. All right. But keep out of trouble. But I have no friends in this place. Who is there for me to get in trouble with? I don't know. But if there is anyone, you'll find her. I don't seem to recall the name Daly. What was the charge against him? Murder. He was found guilty of killing George Emmett in Auburn. Of course. Well, Daly was sentenced to a year in prison by Judge Emmett. He threatened to kill the judge when he got out. Wasn't he seen leaving the judge's home after the murder? Yes, he was. He'd gone there to assure the judge that he meant nothing by the threat. The judge was found dead. I was in Auburn at the time of the trial. I don't remember that. You didn't. I was appointed by the court to defend Daly. Before the trial, he told me nothing that might have helped me. He's told me nothing since the trial. How did you manage to get him a pardon? With the information I obtained from his wife. See, Daly had a wife and two children starving in San Francisco. Suddenly, she was able to buy a small hotel and live in comfort. What does the wife coming into money have to do with the husband? He sent it to her. From jail? Well, Daly saw the judge being murdered. When he was arrested, he was visited by someone close to the killer who agreed to give him $50,000 to keep silent. You mean to say that a man would let himself be hanged for money? Well, Daly had uh, left his family destitute. He'd failed in mining. He saw a chance to do what he thought was the one decent act of his life. Most men would give up their lives to see that their families are provided for. With his record, Daly may have thought that his story wouldn't be believed. and He'd hang anyway. <laughs> then he made out all right. He's got his partner and he's got his money. You should get a good fee from him or his wife. No, I'll get nothing. This is just the first step in a hard job. That is, bringing the real murderer to justice. Do you have a lead on him? Not yet, but I have this much. The murderer is some rich, important man Judge Emmett caught in some crooked deal. You see, the judge's papers had been ransacked. You're going to spend a lot of time working on something as vague as that? Uh, yes. But Judge Emmett was my best friend. And his widow was my sister. Well, supper's ready. Shall we go into the dining room? Tell me, my faithless little wish, did you miss me while I was away? I beg your pardon, senor. Oh, perdón, usted. I was talking to my horse. <laughs> uh, I was in San Carlos before, but unfortunately, we didn't meet. I'm El Toro. El Toro? I am Juanita Mendoza. Oh, mucho gusto en conocerle. <laughs> Gracias. El gusto es mío. Did you not get off the stage at the rival a while ago? Si. It was a funny stage. Only two passengers. Only one. I'm a guard along with the famous Kit Carson. Oh, then you are the El Toro, the comrade of Kit Carson I hear so much about. We never ride them stagecoaches, but this is an affair of importance, an affair of state. It must be wonderful to have a part in matters of such importance. Kit Carson's over at the hotel having his supper right now, but I refuse to join him. I'm tired of that roast beef we've had every day of the journey. It must be tiresome, roast beef every day. Do you know where I could get a good meal of frijoles and tortillas? <laughs> Nowhere better than at my home. At your home, Senorita Juanita? Si. My mother will be on it if I bring home such a guest as El Toro. Come. Never in my whole life have I tasted such food. <laughs> if my mother had only been here, she is much better cook than I. Impossible. <laughs> Drink your coffee while it is hot. I cannot understand why my mother was staying so late at my aunt's. Someday she will cook you a meal that you will never forget. Do you think that I will ever forget this meal? No, my brave one. I am sure you will never forget it. What have you done to me, Sinvergüenza? Sit down, my brave one, and rest. Dad, what's 
good running into you again, Spence. Come up to the ranch and have a little time. Show you some good hunting when that arm's well. Thanks, Jay. I'll take you up for that hunting. It was a real privilege meeting you, Carson. You'll always be welcome at the ranch, too. Thanks, and thanks for fine dinner. How long have you known him, Mr. Spence? Oh, a few years. We're all more or less newcomers here, except you. What did he do wherever he came from? <laughs> we don't ask that question in California. Maybe we ought to start asking it. Well, I guess I'll turn in. See you at five. Everything all right? The boys came and put him on the couch. He was asleep for a week. Where are they? They will be back. You are not going to sit down? No. What is the matter? You look worried, Jay. There must be no slip up with Carson. Do you understand? Juanita never sleeps. It is you men. <laughs> I'm not in the mood to joke. This is a matter of life and death to me now. One way or another, Carson must be sidetracked. Do you have the money for me? You'll get it as soon as I have the pardon and expenses out of the way. I will need it promptly. It will be wise for me to disappear. Mm, you're right. Right. Oh, I have been to the hotel everywhere looking for you. And Toro is in trouble. Where is he? At my house. The constable is there. He's going to take him to jail. Oh, you must not be angry with him. It is not his fault. What's it this time? This time? Yes, what's he done? Why is the sheriff taking him to jail? Oh, it was all my fault. He asked me where he could get some frijoles and tortillas. Oh, he's asked a thousand senoritas that. Oh? I told him my mother was a wonderful cook and she would be glad to provide... My fiancé, Pedro Rodriguez, come back unexpectedly from the mine we have been working. He is very jealous. There was a fight. And when El Toro was victorious, Pedro drew a knife. In taking the knife from Pedro, El Toro caught him. It was not a serious cut. The doctor is there now. He say no more than ten stitches will be required. Just a little slip of the knife, huh? But the constable is going to arrest him. He does not believe El Toro has been working for you. Where's the jail? They are still at my home. El Where? Toro asked me to bring you. Is it far? Don't play with these guys. The first time they make a move, blast them. Hear me?
trouble, Spence? I thought you'd been on the road for hours. It's 8 o'clock. Carson isn't here. He didn't sleep in his room, and his helper disappeared, too. <laughs> no chance of anything happening to Carson. He probably met some pals of his soldier in days and made a night of it. I can't believe that. Carson is absolutely reliable. Sure, he's reliable. But you don't know these frontiersmen. What are you going to do? Pull out without him? I'll have to. My time is running short now. I can get you a good guard, and Carson shows up. I'll tell him you went ahead. He can overtake you on horseback. Yeah, I wish you'd do that. You're going on the stage, Dave. We'll overtake you at Red Gulch. Fire a couple shots in the air, then tell the driver to pull up. What if he doesn't? Throw him off the stage. Why? We're coming in shooting. Spence has to be killed. Do you understand? All right, come on. This is Dave Marlin. Used to fight in the Apache country. Thanks, Dave. We'll show right off. Carson. The stagecoach just left without you. El Toro, I have brought you some coffee. Gracias. I had some of your coffee last night. Oh, but this coffee is different. See? Get the keys. Here, Juanito, hold my coffee. A second thought, maybe you better not. Get over there, your pal. Come on, Cora. Hurry up. Put a pair on the beautiful senorita. Oh, boy, it will be a pleasure. Down of the corral and saddle up the horses. They'll find our guns. Hurry up!
Stay here, Toro. I'll get the one that got away. All right, senor, it's You better shoot me now, Carson. Save the state of trial. I killed Judge Amos. All right, get on your horse. <laughs> You'll be all right now, Mr. Spence. We'll take Mennery and his men to jail, and we'll catch up with you later. Thanks, Jip. All right, on your horses. jail a long time. But I feel a little sad for Juanita. I don't. Ah, but you never taste the frijoles. What a meal. I haven't eaten anything like that in months. Don't you realize yet she drugged you? Ah, but the frijoles she cooked with love in her heart. It was the coffee that was poisoned. Look, you practically got us both killed last night. You and your romances. You gotta cut out that stuff. Good. I promise, Kit. I'm through. No more coffee. I don't mean coffee. No more senoritas. No more senoritas. We better hurry if we're going to catch up to that stage. Kit, did you see that? She's pretty enough to be the sister of Juanita.